Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and I have so many things to talk about. Oh my gosh. So every week, you know, I go to, I get new comics, but then sometimes I have too many, sometimes I don't have enough. Like I've only got three left, you know, one for each day, but I like to do more than uh, one video. Oh my God, I got so many, so many topics to do. I got this one that just popped up. Uh, we got the Captain Marvel, uh, I think final trailer coming out tonight during a football game. I don't know nothing about sports. Um, Joe Glass uh, had a lot of fun videos about Joe Glass. He's got a new Kickstarter. It looks amazing. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm going to back it. I'm going to show it to you. And then uh, Gail Simone uh, looks like she might help destroy, <laughs> destroy a company. Lion Forge hired her for some vaguely defined architect position. And uh, now they just uh, had uh, a round of layoffs. So uh, let's just get right into this one. This one came to me, uh, by the way, of... Uh, uh, friend who uh, is still on Twitter. Uh, I recommend being off of it. <laughs> Everything, food tastes better. Everything, you're going to get your brain back. Uh, but like I said, some people it's okay for them to stay there because if you, you have to have like a really, really stable personality. And if you do have that, you can just go to Twitter and, and take it for what it's supposed to be, a goof. Um, the problem comes when people take it really seriously and it's like, their whole life like they they can't believe anyone would voluntarily leave it's like isn't that like killing yourself it's like no no <laughs> i just uh didn't want to be around uh weirdos and psychopaths and people with fixations and obsessions and um but uh anyway uh so this is cheryl Lynn eaton if you don't know who cheryl Lynn eaton that's actually the the yeah you're you're, you're doing it right so cheryl Lynn eaton is whatever you call people who are you just kind of know them from being on twitter a lot uh, I remember when the uh, Kardashians uh, first became famous, everyone was like, uh, or no, it was like Paris Hilton. They're like, what she, wh what, what did she do? She's like, oh, she's famous for being famous. These people aren't really famous, but they have this weird kind of presence. They get listened to, but they're just people who sit on Twitter all day. <laughs> like, it's a homeless guy who feeds ducks in a city park is... Not only living his best life as compared to these people, but uh, uh, more beneficial to society, especially duck society, than these people are. So, uh, Cheryl Lee, you know it's an SJW when their thread goes like this. Like, SJWs are fart sommeliers. They cannot get enough of uh, themselves and their, their uh, heady musk with a hint of... Is that... Is that... Pumpkin? Pumpkin seed I smell? Oh, yes, that is. Uh, so uh, so I got to do it in the Cicely Tyson voice. Uh, got to be trying to win an Oscar, at least get nominated. So I want to pause for a moment and talk about comics and opportunity. SJWs always do this. They always act as if they're a professor. Or if they're, they, they always have to say, the conversation is starting. Da, 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 da. And now it's end. They hate. Hate conversations they hate dialogue but just like super villains they love monologues because many who are trying to eradicate any advancement of diversity in the industry latch on to a particular erroneous argument that it is racist to hire a writer who is the same background as a character okay so let's check for uh, periods so this is a two sentence uh tweet although technically one of them is just a preamble um and you got a straight up lie <laughs> there's a straw man straight out of oz in your first real sentence that that people are claiming it is racist to hire a writer who is the same background as a character nobody is claiming this and this is a hallmark of sjw's they will create a straw man they will create a fictitious argument and then argue against it and the funniest thing is they will create a fictitious argument that nobody is putting forward and then they will keep uh, mentioning how it's so stupid it's your idea you're calling yourself stupid um so this has to do to references of things like uh eve ewing eve ewing was a woman with no uh comic book experience whose first comic book was a number one of a new series from Marvel. This is not standard. Oh, by the way, you should look at the screen for this because this is the standard for a comic book career. You start on just whatever 
for whatever company will take you and you slowly work your way up to after you know about nine years oh hey you're writing uh you're writing batman congratulations it almost only took you almost a decade to get on a uh, you know a major character another good example is a uh, another black woman uh, named Nettie Okorafor who started, uh, it looks like uh, uh, backup stories for DC, backup stories for Marvel, and then uh, slowly worked her way up to uh, Shuri, which I think is a series, although it might be a miniseries. Uh, and then you got uh, Cheryl Lillen Eaton, who uh, did a backup in Bitch Planet a year and a half ago, and her second book is Batman. Second book, Batman. Let's see how long Brian Edward Hill had to go with Batman. Uh, yeah, nine years. Uh, so uh, one of the things is some people are absolutely given uh, uh, special opportunities, uh, privileged positions, because uh, SJWs in comics, editors and the like, want to virtue signal, oh, we, we don't have enough black women writing. Well, um, I have a question. What is the number of black women you have right now? And what is the correct number what is the goal um and also here's that thing you guys hate here's that thing that drives you to attempt to destroy lives why why aren't you hiring people purely on merit why is someone getting to write batman why does cheryl lynn eaton get to write batman as her second assignment in comics while brian hill who is also black uh, has to wait almost a decade What's going on there? What's different? So it's funny how this argument pops up the moment any black women are hired to write anything. It wasn't a problem for the anti-diversity crowd. Okay, excuse me, I have a question. What is the anti-diversity crowd? Because I think you're implying that it's people like me. But uh, I would contend that it is you. Because there is one group who is rigidly and at times illegally uh, made it so, or attempted to make it so that comic book was an echo chamber, was an industry, industry only for people on the left, specifically the far left. To which, if you say, that's not true, name the Republican writing a book at Image right now, oh, or DC or Marvel. Now you might be able to name one, um, but I'm guessing they're very, very quiet about it because they're in constant fear. So the anti-diversity crowd is you. It's you, it's all the SJWs, it's all your influencers on Twitter. You guys are the anti-diversity crowd. Now, you're already lying or you're just ignorant because Nettie Okorafor did not have any kind of a big uh, push against or, or questioning of her getting hired because she slowly came up from 2012. Same with Brian Edward Hill on uh, Detective Comics. There was no real push. There was a big push for Eve Ewing, who went from never writing a comic to having a highly touted Marvel number one, and who pitched herself for the book on the base of her skin color, gender, hair color, and hometown. To which I say, why would you put, why would you hire Eve Ewing over any other black woman from Chicago? Now, Eve Ewing turned it out to be quite good, but there were extenuating circumstances. Basically, editors, according to my insiders, went through months of honing her and teaching her the ropes of comics because she was basically writing kind of novella style. And you even see that from the final product. It, it tells like a tight, traditional comic book story, and then it ba basically becomes a writing exercise uh, at the end. So it's not true that it pops up anytime any black woman is hired. It pops up when someone uses their race to get hired and has absolutely no resume. Um, it wasn't a problem for the anti-diversity crowd when black men were pigeonholed and only considered for black characters. Oh, but it is. Now, I'm not the anti-diversity crowd. You are, but you're referring to me as that. And I've done videos about Christopher Priest, and he's talked about how he started writing everyone. He was writing Peter Parker, he was writing Wolverine, and then slowly over like 20 years, he only got offers for black characters. 
um, to, the, to the point where he actually chose to leave the industry. He would pop back in now and then, but it looks like his, his, his main job was being a preacher. Christopher Priest is not his actual original name. His original name was James Housley. Um, uh, and we had a problem with that <laughs> because I grew up in an actually, or I grew up reading comics that came from an actually diverse industry, diverse in uh, political opinions, diverse in race, diverse uh, gender-wise. And now we are in this fear-filled and fearful industry where people retain and get jobs based on politics and based on surface traits, you know, that they were basically born with. Um, no problem with the many white men writing white characters. Okay, you're, how many straw men do you have? This argument pops up as a way to prevent black women from being hired in the first place. And it is frustrating and disingenuous because they twist and poison the words of black men like priests to do it. Now, we quoted him accurately using the context and using the history of the industry. You have popped up from basically nowhere to be hired by, oh, uh, Mark Wade for humanoids. That's weird. Why did Mark Wade hire you for humanoids when you only had one previous published book? I mean, you got a Batman book coming out later this month, but all you had was this backup story from more than a year ago on Bitch Planet. Why did you get hired right now by Mark? Oh, okay, because you, you implied he was... So this is... Uh... So she says, uh, Mark Wade is worried about the criticism he re receives in regards to depictions of people of color. I am more worried that what Mark Wade says about blackness is considered more important and given more press than any black comic creator who isn't Coates or Priest. So is her writing style to put the lie in the second sentence? Because I'm seeing a train. She's referring to this uh, book called Strange Fruit, which was um, uh, uh, written by Mark Wade and um, a bunch of whatever you call people who sit on Twitter all day. We're calling him racist because of, I don't know, I didn't read the book, but... When the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When the only thing you have for every situation is to make accusations of racism, everything is somehow amazingly racism. Um, so that's weird. She got hired even though she only had one. Ah, oh, okay. So, um, Priest was rightfully dismayed by the fact that he was only considered to write black characters for a very long time when he was a capable writer who could handle countless characters. His opportunity was limited by publishers' views on race. Well, not always. In the 1980s, he was just considered Joe Schmo writer. Turn it in, it sells, we'll hire you for another one. Once things political correctness started coming out, all people could see was race because people like Cheryl encourage you to only see race. They want an atmosphere of constant tension, constant grievance because it gives them power. They don't want that Star Trek future, because then they're Geordi, and you either you either got the you know the the flux capacitor. I'm blanking on what they call the lithium crystal chamber. Either that's working or it isn't. Geordi doesn't get to play the race card. By the way, rewatch Star Trek. Uh, I remember I remember from the 80s and 90s watching it and thinking that Geordi was a little goody goody. Geordi is an asshole. <laughs> like he is a straight up asshole, and he would absolutely be getting he freaking me too that uh. That, uh, what was it, hologram of the inventor. He's a very rich character, but he is not, like, just like a nice guy like I, I remembered him. So, um, I'm saying he has depth, under, unlike characters like, uh, people like Cheryl Wright. Um, uh, so he was rightfully dismayed is that he was, he was treated equally and then he was treated inequally. And the thing is that Christopher Priest has dignity. He has the dignity to leave the industry when he's not being treated equally. He says, you're only going to hire me black characters. All you're seeing in my skin, I'll go do something else. I respect that. Well, everyone respects Christopher Priest because he holds himself in a way to be respected. But he was turning down paying gigs because he didn't like being offered them for his race. Ahem. Ahem. Moving on. But the fact remains that who you are, your identity, provides you a particular insight into a character that a writer of another background will never be able to grasp or duplicate. Ever. Emphasis on her words. These are lies. Not only are these lies, these are particularly ugly 
segregationist lies. If you're a human, you can empathize with every single other person. You don't put them in the different groups. Oh, I, I, my expectations are this high for this group, they're this high for this group. Oh, I didn't factor in that you grew up here, so let me lower expectations. All it takes is a modicum of research to be able to write a character that does not have your background. Brian Hill, even though I didn't like this book, he actually interviewed white supremacists to write uh, Postal uh, from a couple years ago and to write American Carnage. That's what you do. You do a little bit of research and if you have empathy and you're not a sociopath or a dyed-in-the-wool racist, you can write anyone. So your emphasis on the words uh, uh, never and ever, two lies. That insight, it's, oh, I forgot to do the book. That insight, it's vital. Multiple insights are. And to have characters like Storm and Misty Knight, and at one time Ironheart, never be handled by black women, who shared some of those characters' experiences, and who could provide that insight is a disgrace. So tell me about being an African weather goddess there, uh, Cheryl Ann Eaton. Tell me about being a genius uh, MIT student there, Cheryl Ann Eaton. Tell me about being a New York detective with a bionic arm there, Cheryl Ann Eaton. Now, I know you did say some, but you keep saying that your, your advantage is that you're black. The problem is you're only one person. Your insight is just for yourself. I've said this before. People ask me, oh, you were in the Marines and the Army. What was the Marines like? What was the Army like? I, I, I go, I can't really tell you what the Marines is like. I wasn't in the entire Marine Corps in all different years. I was in uh, two different units, uh, one for most of the time, at a very specific uh, point in time. I can tell you what it was like to be in Golf Company from 2000 to 2004, uh, but I can't, specifically in my platoon, specifically in my section, plus specifically in my squad, and my insight gets fuzzier as it goes out from, you know, literally me and my team and my squad and myself. Um, all of those very rich characters, well, Ironheart is rich now because, uh, you know, she's been expanded. Let's say Storm and Misty Knight, are, are, they were rich from the beginning, uh, were created by white men. Um, and they are embraced by all people, and especially black people. I've never seen a black person or heard a black person say, man, Storm's just a... She sounds like a white girl. She sounds no, Storm sounds like who she is. African, I believe. I believe she has dual uh, nationality. Um, but uh, these identities are particular points of view. Yeah, very singular points of view. Your life as Cheryl Eaton, black woman who spends too much time on Twitter. They are lenses to help you see these worlds. No, not not worlds, just you. And when a writer shares the same background as a character, that lens provides clarity. I, I scream clarity because she put it all in caps. Um, now, you don't need clarity all the time, even most of the time. Now she's getting kind of loosey-goosey with the exclamation points. Distortion can be kooky and it's interesting. Oh, now she, okay. I think she, that's why we have funhouse mirrors. What? What's the deal with SJWs randomly mentioning funhouse mirrors all of a sudden? But when it came to black women in Marvel, funhouse mirrors were all they had until Eve and Riri. Oh my god. Several black women wrote at Marvel Comics before Eve Ewing did. And uh, Nydia Korafor did it in the traditional way. She, she worked her way up from back backup stories and whoever would hire her. Uh, to more backup stories, to uh, a miniseries, to a series. This is the traditional trajectory of uh, a writer. This is not, and this is not. There was a problem. It's a problem when any character is helmed solely by one group. Why? Why is that a problem? What if, in a country of what, 65% majority white people, a character created by Storm, uh, uh, white men created her, and she was written um, pretty much exclusively by white men and women for 40 years. These were rich stories. Now, if you have someone else who wants to tell a rich story, 
and they're of any race, that's great. But there's no real reason to say the the first 40 years of her, you know, uh, history before, um, uh, I believe her name is Roxane Gay, and then Eve, uh, no, Nnedi Okorafor wrote her. Nnedi Okorafor wrote Storm pretty much the way everyone else does when they write her a character. I didn't notice any special insight. Uh, she wrote her well, but I would not say she wrote her any better or worse than Anna Senti when she did, when she did a background story in classic uh, X-Men 30 years ago. Um, an even bigger problem when that group doesn't respect the group the character belongs to or consider it's inferior. So here's the problem. You're asking to be considered inferior. You are asking not to follow the trajectory of Brian Edward Hill, not to follow the trajectory of Nnedi Okorafor, but to follow the trajectory of Eve Ewing and yourself, to either get immediately skipped to the head of the line with uh, editors giving you more attention than the average writer because you you don't really know how to write comics, or to go from a backup story in a bitch planet one shot to writing Batman. We're not treating you inferior. You're asking to be held to a lower set of standards, to be given an easier and privileged position in the industry. And that belief in the inferiority of black women, that's what led to the racist uproar when Eve Ewing was hired to write Ironheart. Okay, so it actually wasn't racist to say a woman with no experience who pitched herself based on her skin color and hair hairdo uh, was a bad idea and was in itself racist. It is racist to, to hire someone for their skin color. That's what was done. She was she did not pitch herself as uh, much of anything besides black female hairdo and from Chicago. By the way, I'm I'm going to assume her hairdresser is also a black woman from Chicago. Why would you hire Eve Ewing over her her own hairdresser or her sister? Why? Why? She was not. She did not present the things that made. It should have been like, hey, I'm Eve Ewing. I really like Ironheart. I got a pitch. It's great. You should check it out. You should absolutely check it out. That's that's what that's what you do. Even though I was right when I said she'd be great to handle the character, but you were just guessing. And you were just guessing because you were yes cleaning it up. There was no evidence that she would be uh, great. I would say she was good. And the, the evidence is going to come when the training wheels come off. When she has to hit a monthly benchmark and she does not have multiple editors and other writers helping her to slowly learn how to write in a standard superhero uh, style. Because those people believed any insight coming from a black woman would be worthless. False. And that a black woman could not possibly have the talent to helm a book at uh, Marvel. Wow, you lie a lot. <laughs> and let's not push the lie that it was about experience. That's not a lie, that's the truth. Again, here's Nnedi Okorafor. You gotta scroll to see all her experience. Here's uh, Brian Edward Hill. You have to scroll like four times to see all his experience. And here's Eve Ewing. Now I know it looks like there's a couple books, but it's just the same book and they're doing all the covers. And then here's you. Notice the difference? Uh, experience helps. I will say that Brian Edward Hill is uh, the best writer and he has the most experience. Nnedi Okorafor, despite my uh, issues with Shuri number one, uh, is better was better than Eve Ewing. And I've never read anything by you, but I'll check out this Detective comic. So it's literally been... Brian Edward Hill, most experienced, the best of these uh, black uh, writers that I picked. Nettie Okorafor, the second most experienced, the second best. Eve Ewing, uh, well, technically I've never read anything about you, but technically your book hasn't come out yet, I believe. So one and one. So experience does matter. And it's not racist to ask why someone no experience was given a prime assignment. Especially when they didn't pitch, pitch their self on the experience, but they pitched their self on their skin color. When there was no equal uproar about white men with zero coming to Marvel from other mediums. So I actually researched this because I actually asked, when was the last time a white guy with no experience in comics was given a prime position? And what they uh, mentioned was uh, the guy who created the H HBO uh, TV show Carnival. Um, he came in with no experience, um, but he had been a TV writer for decades and he was coming hot off of like that was a really well 
uh, uh, reviewed show at the time. Kind of fell down the memory hole, but I remember I didn't even have HBO, and I remember reading about it all the time. The other one was this guy who there was literally it was literally uh, uh, he met a guy at a party and pitched him a Batman idea. And then he got hired. I forget the guy. He worked for a couple of years and then he, he moved on to uh, video games, I believe. But uh, I asked people and that was basically it. Now, uh, the uh, the Carnival guy didn't even come in on a number one. He came in on, I believe, the second uh, storyline of a new Iron Man series. And then the uh, uh, the Batman guy actually got really lucky. I think he jumped straight onto Detective Comics for like a three issue run. But that was, you know, the traditional old school. Hey, I met someone at a party. I gave him my pitch. And I got hired on my pitch. This unnamed guy, whose name I forgot, he got hired on having a connection and having a pitch. Eve Ewing got hired on, off of, uh, uh, I have the same hairdo as the character. Sheesh. Um, and so racists cried out that Marvel only hired her because she was black. And that being black should never be a requirement. So that's actually not something that racists did. That's what uh, normal people did. Because... It does look like she was hired or at least given a special attention to repeatedly pitch a story because of the attention come from her pitching, um, mainly because she was the same race. And that being black should never be a requirement. Yeah, that's not racist. There's, there's no race requirement for writing any character of any race or creating any character of any race. Having multiple unique insights over the course of a series should be a requirement so that we can get a full view of a character. No. No. Well, first of all, every single human being on the planet has a unique insight, so that's nothing special. Uh, what's important is to uh, write good stories that sell and uh, to either create the character, uh, uh, refine or redefine the character, or write the character in character. And that goes for all characters. Put a trans woman on Nightwing. Let an Asian dude write a Black Panther arc. White men have been writing anything and everything with zero pushback. Give the rest of that equal treatment. I have pushed back like crazy on white dudes since the beginning of this uh, channel. And I will continue to do so. Uh, you need to unclench. Is that coal is about to turn into a diamond. You need to stop seeing yourself and pushing an image of yourself only as a black woman and start pushing yourself as a writer if you wanted to be treated seriously and also to get better also nobody cares what uh anyone's identity is if they're obviously talented notice how there's a bunch of youtube reviewers and all the problems with e-viewing evaporated once we saw a good story that's all it has to be. All it has to be a good story. And then you're free. Uh, give us the same consideration. Nobody is harassing Bendis or King for being white guys number 9,685 to write Superman and Batman. Well, both Bendis and King, neither of whom I really like, uh, got to write Superman and Batman by uh, spending years and years and years doing the traditional path of Brian Edward Hill or Nnedi Okorafor, writing whatever they can get at any time. He wrote the, what was it, the Lion Man and Space and then the Vision. He worked his way up to Batman. Uh, Bendis worked his way up over decades up to Superman. Evian didn't work for anything. <laughs> she was handed a special opportunity to repeatedly a pitch and then special training. And you got Batman as your second book. You're the one with privilege. You're the one skipping to the head of the line. These white guys, you got to keep up bringing the race. They did the traditional path. Start from anything. Bendis started in Indies. Uh, uh, um, Tom King started as being an intern. Grab whatever you can. Slowly work your way up. No one is saying their special insight is not needed. Or they were only hired because they were white men. Because that would be stupid. We've all seen them start from Indies. Start from being interns. Start from one shots and backup stories and annuals and slowly work, work their way up over a decade to several decades. We saw you go from a backup story to Batman. We saw Eve Ewing going from a haircut to Ironheart. But when you have been taught repeatedly that Group X is less than you, and then a member of that group earns a position at a company you wanted, bewilderment sets in. 
Either you face the fact that the person has skills you do not, or you turn to bigotry and harassment. Okay, so, I'm trying not to curse, <laughs> but if I did curse, it would be right here. Uh, what you're doing is absolutely disgusting. You are weaponizing race and gender to skip to the head of the line. You are also weaponizing race and gender to protect people from standard due diligence. Hey, what have you done before? Oh, nothing? Yeah, let's put you on a number one at Marvel. Hey, what have you done before? Uh, a backup story in a bitch planet one shot from a year and a half ago? Your second book should definitely be a Batman book. We are treating you as equals. You are asking to be treated inferior. You are asking, excuse me, you are demanding to be held to a different and lower set of expectations. We've seen the choices some have made. Talent plus insight plus mentoring equals opportunity. Every person on earth has insight and it will never be enough to get you through the door. Absolutely. You got to grind. I guarantee that guy who gave a pitch at a party, he did not make that Batman story up on the spot. Or at least he had been forming ideas in the tournament and the rock tumbler uh, uh, in his head over years. So, you know, when you get that opportunity, when you get that elevator pitch, you got it ready, boom, Batman would do this. Batman on a game show, getting all the wrong answers on purpose. You're interested. You're, you're wondering why he's doing this. You want to buy this bitch. So then, oh, there's Kwanzer. Erroneous or tactically disingenuous about the world we live in? That line argument often comes from the unaffected. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kwanzer was sent you uh, but anyway, that's it. I'm going to get back to work. Um, so tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about the type of stuff Cheryl Ann Eaton is doing. Tell me what it, think it feels like to be N Nettie Okorafor doing all this to get on your own series. Brian Edward here doing all this. All this. Gee, I keep scrolling to get on Batman. And then Eve Ewan doing this. And Chris Cheryl Ann Eaton doing this. What's going on here? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the uh, Patreon, the GoFundMe, and the Indiego uh, Indiegogo. And I'll have more new comic reviews. And, well, uh, I'll probably do that. No. I'll do a new comic review. Eh, maybe. Definitely going to have the Captain Marvel next. Thanks. Bye.